Yeah. Okay, th yeah. Thanks for coming all. Um, it's a nice small group, which is which is actually good for this. <laughs> um, so yeah, my name is Delaney de Toy. Um, I work for the city of Cape Town. So we've got about three we've got three delegates that attending this conference. So I think from that you can see that we're quite keen on exploring uh, other possibilities for, for for local government and the municipality. Um, so I head up a unit. Um, that's focused on two areas. The one is the performance side of the city and uh, look at t taking a look holistically at, at the structures and the systems in that space. And on the other side, we've got a data science unit. So uh, in terms of talks, it will probably be the, the most or the least technical talk that you'll hear, I think. Uh, so my job is to employ smart people and then let them figure these sort of things out. So I'm just uh, gonna give you um, so basically how I got to this is sort of just, uh, we're bu busy with a journey in my unit in terms of the data science um, uh, branch. And uh, so basically it's a reflection on, on what we've been doing and sort of challenges that we've experienced. Um, and then on a bigger scale, the city is also busy exploring their IT operating model. Uh, I'm not gonna expand too much on that, but, uh, but there's opportunities in that space for a more sort of open source, um, uh, view and, and uh, processes uh, to, to fill into that space. Um, and then basically it's just trying to see how we can grow innovation in the city and then also our skill space, uh, which I'll touch on a bit later as well, um, the current situation. And then ultimately it's just sort of learning from, uh, from smart people. So, I mean, that's, that's sort of the, the reasons for attending and talking here today. Okay, so I thought I'll just start off with uh, um, so I did some literature review as well, just to uh, see what's out there uh, in South Africa and then also internationally. Um, and then I think, so we, I mean, we also try, I mean, whenever we start something, we try and start from scratch instead of just looking f to the past. So, and that's basically what these pictures represent. And then, but at the bottom, you can also see that it's not as simple as just picking up a previous document and, or a previous system or code or program and running with it. I mean these incremental changes that ultimately gets it to a, to a better place. Yeah. So in the South African context, which I was surprised was, um, uh, this was in 2007 that the South African government uh, uh, brought out this policy. And I mean, it had some very clear um, instructions. So, I mean, it basically, it said, I mean, you have to implement um, uh, free open source. Um, you have to migrate to current proprietary software, your proprietary software to VOS. Um, so basically it said if, yeah, if, you, if you're going to do a tender or if you're going to replace your IT systems, first take a look at um, open source and then see is there, I mean, if there isn't a, a better proprietary system out there, I mean, you have to use open source. So, and I don't think that has ever happened in any local government or any government really in South Africa. Um, a new software needs to be developed in open standards. Um, so, I mean, these are things that we're grappling with uh, currently in our data strategy in the city as well. Um, but it's, I mean, like in 2019 that you have to think about these things all over again when in 2006, 2002 even, yeah, these things were brought up. Um, so all, all uh, government resources, which is paid for by tax uh, payers' f uh, money, I mean, it needs to be open content as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so use of open content and open standards within South Africa context for government. So I think these are... So yeah, we, we're grappling with it internally and then also, not just internally, but also working with other government entities. Um, how, do we, how do we work together on an open standard, which doesn't exist currently? Yeah. Um, this is sort of the document that informed the previous one. Um, there was this um, National Advisory Council on Innovation and one of their work groups was open software. And that was in 2002 already. And what they basically, I mean, there's a lot that they said, but basically it came down to uh, make open standards a non-negotiable. Um, uh, for IS and T in the public sector, um, it didn't encourage agencies and public institutions to use open software whenever feasible. So, I mean, yeah, looking uh, starting with open software and then seeing if there's if there's anything better out there in terms of propriety. But if there isn't, use open software, um, and then allow an, uh, a level playing field with propriety alternate uh, uh, in government software procurement. Because I think uh, what you'll see and what you probably experience is lots of government, or well, most of government is run by vendors or, or uh, big, big corporations and their uh, ERP systems or office systems. Uh, and there's very little 
uh, involvement for open source currently. Okay, for I'll just for throw in this picture because I think uh, as you go through the readings and stuff, so a nice, I think a nice uh, example was Estonia. Um, so I mean they, they're basically sort of the the beacon for open source uh, in government and what one what is possible with open source in government. Um, so I mean they're sitting on all these European councils now and informing the rest of Europe about how to work with open source and security. Um, and uh, I think that second one, the interoperability services. So they've got this, uh, I think it's called X-Road. Um, and basically what it does is it allows two organizations, in this, in this instance countries, like Finland and Estonia, to share data that's uh, confidential um, by using blockchain technologies. Um, so I mean, that's, that's sort of things that we as a city is also grappling with. I mean, how do you... How do we get uh, SASA data? How do we get home affairs data? Um, uh, and how do we share these things without compromising uh, personal identity and the whole Poppy Act, uh, personal identification um, yeah, act? Uh. Then also just sort of, it was interesting to see that, uh, I mean, a lot of money is being spent on software. So, okay, but what you're looking at here is, I think it's, a, uh, so they depreciate over five to 10 years. Um, so the cost there, what you'll see, the cost price is basically up to this point for that period. I mean, so when you look at Cape Town, it's over a billion. When you look at Joburg, it's over two billion. Um, and then obviously now the depreciation is on an annual basis. So we s it looks like it's about, um, uh, what's that now? About 100,000, no, it can't, yeah, probably more than that, 500,000 uh, spending on, on uh, open source, uh, on uh, propriety software and licensing. Okay, but this also includes the contracting fees. But all I'm trying to say with this slide is to say this, I mean, there's lots of opportunities financially uh, to explore other avenues. Um, and obviously we're making certain companies rich um, and also with a limited, uh, limited supply of skills uh, out there. Where if you look at universities, I mean, they, nobody, no university trains on uh, SAP or Microsoft as an example. I mean, they train on open source software uh, because it's, I mean, it doesn't cost anything. So you've already got skilled resources coming out of university able to go into to, to, to the uh, workforce. Um, okay, then, but uh, having said that, I mean, uh, I have to say working, um, working in government and, and law, I mean, we're 27,000 people in the city of Cape Town, so there are some benefits to using uh, proprietary software. It's not just all a negative. Um, and like, yeah, if you have to put yourself in the shoes of the person having to, to, to run this organization in the, I, uh, uh, the IT environment. Um, so basically, I mean, some of the advantages is that single, uh, that single vendor, so that one-stop shop. So I mean, it makes it comfortable for the person and they can sleep at night because they, can only deal, they only have to deal with one vendor. And that vendor takes care of all their issues for them. Um, then also that includes all the patching vulnerabilities, the exploits, and all the updates. Um, so it's one, yeah, one vendor that sorts that out for you and, and uh, you don't have to worry about anything. Um, and also the other benefit is that vendors, obviously there's lots, especially in, in government, there's lots of compliance, uh, legal aspects that you need to think about. I mean, there's hundreds, thousands of different acts and policies, bylaws. Um, and uh, so in some spaces, if you take the finance and asset management space, most of these large um, proprietary software companies already has got all that thinking uh, in, in the software. Um, so that, that saves you from starting from scratch and introducing it into your software. Um, then obviously, I mean, uh, so, but what's happening now is we, government is moving away from programming and technology skills. So it's just sort of managing vendors now. And that's, that's so they're buying out of the box uh, solutions. Um, and then obviously yeah, vendors, um, yeah, they provide certain discounts. Uh, obviously the larger your company is, that comes with some fringe benefits. I mean, you can go on nice conferences overseas, uh, play some golf, all these other sort of benefits. You, they even give you some uh, awards for their implementing their own product. So I think there's a uh, few certain individuals in large organizations uh, yeah, would, would find that quite, quite beneficial for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> then, 
Um, okay, I mean, there's lots of benefits of open source and government, but I've, I've just listed quite a few. I mean, obviously, it comes down to innovation and growth. So currently, where we're relying on vendors, uh, you're, you're bringing it back into your organization and you're having your people think about solutions instead of other people thinking, uh, thinking it up for you. Um, it creates this, obviously, collective community, uh, not just internally in the city, but also around the world. I mean, in South Africa and, and also internationally. And then, I mean, one of, one of the biggest benefits is also the flexibility. Um, so I think when you talk to large provi service providers or proprietary providers, they, they try to stay ahead of the game, but, I mean, they'll never get there. Um, so I'm thinking now in the space of data science. So they're trying to come up with... Uh, licensed software that you can buy from them that make it easier for you but um, uh, in the open source space I mean these these things are freely available and obviously it's growing at a, at a fast pace especially in that in that environment um, so you're basically basically taking open source back window or packaging it and then selling it back to you yeah. okay so just in, in um, so I mean, yeah, like I said, what the normal ISMT person uh, is thinking about is they want to manage or minimize their risk um, and it's also these people have a, they've got a good knowledge about vendors. Um, so I mean, like I said, they're not technology, they're not IT specialists, they're vendor specialists. Um, and through their vendor involvement, they've they've gathered quite a lot of IT knowledge. But it's it's if you come to a problem with them, it will be how do you how will the vendor uh, approach this problem? Um, the other thing that I would say is quite valid is the maintenance and support of systems. So I mean, even if you go open source, I mean, how will you how will you maintain and support the system? So there needs to be some sort of a, a process or a system in place for that. Yeah. Um, and then there's this perception from from IS and T. Um, yeah. So maybe let me just say, I mean, my my unit doesn't sit in IS and T, so that's why I'm reference. That's why I'm referring to IS and T the whole time. So our unit is a business unit, uh, and and I mean through times that, that are changing, business is starting to help themselves more by using open source. And IT is starting to realize, but listen here, people are becoming less dependent on us. And obviously that's becoming a threat to them and their existence. So, um, so they would also want to try and contain and manage that. And in certain instances, I mean, there's a, there's, it's, it's, it's valid. Um, but I think if you want, if I'm uh, valid in the sense that if you want to institutionalize or or think about an enterprise scale, I think they need to get involved and try and create that structure. But uh, when it comes to people wanting to help themselves in their own unit, uh, there's no reason why uh, they can't use open source. Um, and then there's also this uh, sort of this thinking process of saying that whenever you introduce this sort of language, they say, oh, but that's for startups. I mean, that's bleeding edge. Um, yeah, you're putting us at risk. Um, and um, uh, yeah, these I mean these these aren't tried and tested uh, solutions, um, and yeah, so this this will never fly in the organisation. Even though some of these open source software are, are running large organisations, organization, so and like I mentioned, it's to protect the turf. Yeah, so uh, an example is recently went to them for a specific dashboard that we wanted to build, um, and. The, um, it was felt that only they can do it and nobody else in the organization can do it. So there needs to be clear roles and responsibilities uh, established in that space. Yeah. Um, so obviously with all this uh, uh, rules and things of IT is putting in place, people are starting to do this. They're starting to put servers underneath their desk. They're starting to help themselves. So what's so by either, I mean, what you can do is just embrace open source and say, how can we help you to not let this happen? Because now what's happening is there's people sitting with quite uh, critical data there. Um, and then obviously something will go wrong. You'll lose that data. That data is not integrated or interoperable with anything else. Uh, you can't use it for decision making, although it's quite critical for the organization. Uh, um, okay, so just a few challenges that I've listed. So I mean, like uh, I think, I mean, okay, from my perspective, I'm like from a non-technical. So uh, I think reading through through some of the literature, I think it's a safety and security is a is a concern. I think like when you see some of the the number of instances, I think they reference a 22,000 new software vulnerabilities in 2018. Um, so agencies potentially needed to check their system uh, for, 200, for 420 bucks every week. Yeah. Um, and then also basically saying that um, 
developers that works with open source, they're not, they functionally, they, they focus on functionality, not necessarily security. So if you're gonna go this route, yeah, one needs to consider how do you put a unit together that, can, that will be their sole purpose, is to make sure that uh, there's no security vulnerabilities. Um, yeah. Then in terms of procurement challenges, um, so I mean the, the whole city runs on of the, or any municipality or local government runs of the MFMA, it's the Municipal Financial Management Act, and that is sort of informed by the triple PFA, um, it's the uh, national nationals equivalent. Um, and basically what that says is any procurement that you do needs to be fa fair, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost effective. So even though it says that, I don't think it's, it's happening. Um, but then also saying that is that um, the challenge in that space uh, comes down to the skills, the maintenance, and then the procurement lead times. So as an example, if you want to, uh, if you want to introduce a new application into the organization and you want to go to market, that would mean it's, uh, you're looking at a year process uh, before you can get your product. That, that's not even talking about the internal uh, red tape that you have to go through to get to the point where you can go on a tender. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you're looking from a year and a half to two years before you even get something in that space. Um, and then also, yeah, I mean, like I said before, we're not incentivized to share information or, or technology or code. So, I mean, I'm talking with provincial, national, each one is doing their own thing. Um, so there's, there's um, initiatives to work together and forums that's being put in place, but it's, uh, yeah, it probably needs a bit more, um, yeah, sort of drive behind it. Uh, similarly with contractors, I mean, when a contractor gets a job, they're just interested in their own specific uh, software and not interested in other people working with them uh, on trying to sort of improve it um, to a, a, fi a more refined product. Uh, um, uh, the other thing that's quite important, like, I mean, procurement, I mean, I don't know if you've done procurement in government, it's quite a, it's quite, there's lots of paperwork in that space and it's quite a laborious process. I mean, this. Uh, and yeah, you need some legal guidance um, as well. So it can take some time. So if you're talking about a small uh, organization or unit that's trying to, to provide a service to government, I mean, yeah, you need to either get somebody in who can advise you or you're gonna to spend some time trying to figure out um, what's happening there. Um, then there's also this perception that, I mean, if we're spending money, then these, obviously it's valuable. Um, so, I mean, the more millions we can spend, the more valuable the product is for us, uh, and the more people are focused. But unfortunately, that is actually true. I mean, uh, yeah, because as soon as people see this couple of million attached to the to the project, then th they come to the meetings, um, and yeah, and start making decisions. So. Um, then also, I mean, yeah, like, uh, yeah, we don't really upgrade any software. Um, so, I mean, we've got large propriety software uh, units coming in. They, they've been there from the start, and obviously you'll, uh, you'll never get rid of it. Um, uh, and in certain instances, it's, it's valid. I mean, like, if you're talking about your finance uh, aspects, I think it's, I mean, that's critical for the organization. But there is this peripheral edge sort of um, instances where you can start expanding into another space, into open source. Um, and not having to buy proprietary software. Um, yeah, then obviously it's costly to switch, and then, yeah, we, I mean, government, when it comes to proprietary software, not pretty really good at negotiating. I mean, that goes for everything, really. I mean, uh, it's really, it's probably the exception that we, in the, even in construction uh, projects, we can negotiate down the price. I mean, it's, you can, but yeah, it's really, it's really been done well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, then the other challenge, uh, talking about the space and also for government, is licensing. I think, I mean, there's, there's quite a lot of licenses, so let's try, I mean, at the moment, I don't think we, in the city, there's anybody who understands this. Um, so, I mean, we'll have to go out on a, uh, to a legal, IT legal person and try and sort of give us some guidance on what does it mean when we work with service providers, when we work with academia, uh, what licenses are prevalent, uh, what does it mean for us, what's the risk? Uh, how do we also how do we protect the individual or the other company? Um, so this is something that we'll yeah, we'll need to explore a bit more going forward. Uh. And then yeah, skills. I mean like I mean like I said before in the, in our organisation, uh, our skill sets has sort of dissipated. Um, it's gone more to the vendor side. 
So, I mean, we can tell you a lot about that and how they operate. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we, I mean, from a data science unit, when we in engage IT, it's sometimes difficult to, uh, to talk the same language um, and under sort of get your message across in terms of what you want to do. Um, and that also means senior manager managers also are becoming non-technical. Uh, yeah, and thinking of it in a vendor way. Um, then also, I think the, it's, I mean, like, I was, uh, well, okay, the other thing I was quite surprised was that, I mean, that uh, national policy was the only one that I could find. There's no, there's no city policy on open source. There's no other policy in South Africa that I could find. Um, so, which is also interesting. So, I mean, from a city perspective, it's something that one can consider to, to say, I mean, how do we, uh, how do we put it in our, in our tenders uh, uh, and any other engagements that we have with, with service providers? Uh. Um, yeah, and then obviously, I mean, to, I mean, like I said, we've got enough, I think there's enough resources and skills resources uh, coming out of universities with the right type of skills ready to go. Uh, we just need to create the environment for them to, to come on board, yeah. And then, so yeah, in terms of open source, I think the, uh, I mean, the principles of open source pretty much is quite the same as uh, in, in the municipalities, they talk about the Batapele principles. And it's all about collaboration, transparency, this community. Um, so I think uh, by embracing this this way of doing things, I think I mean we're, you're well aligned to to what the municipalities is trying to do at the moment anyway. Yeah. And then yeah, so this I thought was uh, was more just interesting in terms of seeing. I mean, uh, if you go into that space, uh, I mean what is available to you. So, I mean, this is just from GitHub, um, Octoverse, and all it's saying, I mean, there's lots of developers, there's lots of organizations that's making use of GitHub, um, and there's lots of repositories and pull requests. So, there's lots of people playing in that space. So, if you're going to put something out, it's not that uh, there'll, be, there'll be somebody or a group or, or, a, or uh, individuals, potentially not locally, but it might be internationally, that can assist you with your initiative. Yeah. Um, so the other thing was like some of the projects that they were working on, top open source projects um, uh, that stood out. I mean, there's some nice machine learning things there. Uh, there's Kubernetes that was spoken about today. Um, and then the fastest growing ones. Uh, so again, the machine learning things. Um, uh, okay. This was also interesting. It's just to sort of say let's what organizations in terms of the employees are contributing uh, to GitHub. So I think like you can see what this Microsoft is contrib contributing quite a lot, Google, Red Hat. And then the other thing that was quite good to see was at the universities. So, I mean, from a city perspective, uh, we're trying to work closer with universities in order to help us with research, but then also potentially help us with um, applications and things that can hel help society. So, um, and yeah, so it's how do we as a city work better with universities uh, and academia to, to make that happen, yeah. Uh, this was this interesting top languages, um, JavaScript there at the top, and then Java and Python. Um, and then countries that's contributing, uh, but yeah, no African one there. Uh, and then we, we it's growing the fastest, so I mean, Nigeria was quite good to see there, uh, an African country. Uh, and then also they've got the student developer pack on GitHub. So I think just encouraging to see that, I mean, there's, I mean, there's people making use of it and there's people trying to educate themselves, which basically will provide more resources for the cities um, and for government to, to explore open source. Yeah. Um, and then also another interesting one was just uh, popular ca app category stacks. I think it was in the security space, which is good to see. And then the um, integration, what is that? Um, uh, the continuous integration as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, so coming down, coming to the city, so I'll just reference two sort of instances that we're busy with. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of happening in our space. Um, so you might have heard uh, some, I mean, you've, uh, Gordon is working for the city, so he's given a talk this morning about airflow, and then we've got another colleague, colleague uh, Ria is going to talk a bit later, I think after this, uh, about Kubernetes. So I think you can see from a data science perspective, we're embracing open source in the city, and we've built our own uh, stack here. So, I mean, we're not, we're not, it's another procurement issue. I mean, we can't go into the cloud, 
So we have to do everything locally on premise, uh, but that's another issue that we need to sort out. Um, and um, yeah, so I think this, I mean, like you can see it now by doing this, I think we're opening uh, possibilities for ice and TTC, okay, but there's different ways of doing things. Uh, it's not just the standard way of, of the vendors. So, uh, and I think we, we're being approached now as well to sort of see how can we how we, can we assist them in thinking differently about about how they approach the problem. Yeah. This was this was a nice project I think because this involved us working with um, uh, a large one of the big uh, consulting firms in South Africa. So when you think of those guys, you don't think about open source. Um, and what was nice, this was in the asset management space that they did some work for us. This, this is a prototype, an example. Um, but so they needed to go and understand mini subs, mini substations in, in Cape Town, and try and understand in, uh, by looking at the data, how can we make better capital decisions? Replacing, uh, instead of just replacing on a schedule, uh, replacing a bit more intelligently um, by using data. And what was nice about it is, I mean, they did this all in open source. So previously what would have happened in the city, they would have, the company would have done the work. They would have written a, a report for us. We would have gotten the report. That report would have gone through a process internally uh, and lots of discussions uh, that needed funding. You're looking six months, a year later that somebody would start that process and develop something. So what was nice here, working with the firm is uh, we were able to, within the morning, I mean, uh, like 30 minutes or an hour, to pluck their, um, the work they've done into our environment and the data science environment, and then make it visible and transparent to the, to the user, the electricity department in this instance. So electricity was able to play with this uh, and give feedback, continuous feedback, uh, in order to improve the product eventually. So. Uh, and I think that's, that's sort of a testament to the value of open source as well in terms of the prototyping. Uh, the next step is now potentially, in, okay, but how do you institutionalize these sort of things? Um, it's the next challenge for us as well. I mean, the one option is, yeah, expand on this, or the other option is you say, okay, look, okay, we're happy with our proprietary software, but when we're going to spend 20 or 50 million, uh, we want to make sure we spend it right. Because currently what happens is you have to write this, a spec, it's set in concrete, and then at the end of, end of the day, you don't get what you want. But uh, yeah, sorry, you've given me your spec. So uh, yeah, tough is. Um, yeah, so I think this is a, this is promising um, working with these companies. Um, ach, this was just a model that thinking about. So I mean, um, the uh, the up and spoke model. I mean, uh, where IT. Uh, I think this was actually more for the data science, but I think you can sort of take it to the IT space as well. Just in terms of the data science, it was to say that there'll, there'll be a center of excellence in, uh, centrally, uh, but then you empower line. I mean, you p empower the health guys, the safety and security, electricity, water, um, uh, community services, all these other spaces with uh, data analytic skills. But uh, there's no way, uh, there's no reason why we can't apply it in terms of um, uh, open source in the organization where ISNT provides the platform that we operate from and um, but then you empower the, the analyst in line to build their own applications using open, s open source in order to help them with their decision making uh, and then there's a nice link there to academia and industry so we um, uh, like I say, we, I mean, we're working closely with academia and we're doing a lot of, a lot of projects with them at the moment as well to see how we can share data. And not just that, but how do we, when they do their research, the code that they write, how do we get that code back into our space? And that's where the licensing then becomes important. We need to understand what does it mean for us and for them. Um, and then uh, for us to then build on that code um, and, and make it a better product for the city. Okay, just some quick, I think, just some quick in terms of opportunities that one can see. Um, so yeah, the one is to make uh, it explicit in our tenders to say if we're going to write a tender, uh, it must be open source first, uh, and then if there isn't an open source solution or anything that you can do in that space, then go to propriety. The other one is, uh, but I was quite surprised. I think with the cities, I think the city is quite advanced. I don't think uh, it's not. I mean. It sounds like there's lots of constraints and bottlenecks, but actually I think there's, 
all the mechanisms are in place to, to allow for open source to flourish. So the next one is panel tender. So all that means is when you do a tender, instead of asking for a vendor to give me an application, you say, give me, give me skills. So you put out a tender to say to, to the market. Uh, it can be uh, service providers, it can be individuals, and say, I want certain skills. And then whenever I've got a project that requires that skills, I'll put out a job application uh, advert and then apply. And then of the 10 or 50 people that apply, we're going to use the, the following five, let's say. Um, so I think that, that, ex that, that opportunity exists in the city currently. Yeah. Uh, the one, so I think it's a long lead time to set it up, but then once it's set up, it's quick. I mean, you can within seven days you can get a resource in the in the city. Yeah. Uh, then academia, like I said, I mean, just working with them closer, uh, and then obviously the c getting the code back, and then service providers, the example I showed, uh, and then also different funding models. So potentially uh, civil society, NGOs, philanthropists. I mean, they've got money lying around. They want to s make some changes in the, in society. Um, so by working with us um, and then funding the process, we can work with, uh, with individuals, with academia, um, and then build out a, a product uh, that can, in the health space or the informal settlements, etc. Um, other challenges, okay, I think this is what I said before, is just um, uh, that I can think of that one will just need to consider is the maintenance and support, but all that will mean is uh, as part of the tender, you can either put a tender out that says, okay, we need some, some individuals who can maintain for the next three years, uh, maintain these following applications that we have, uh, or you can build that skill set internally, which is probably the better option. Um, and then just the security. So, uh, yeah, I mean, having people or a unit or even uh, um, outsourcing that potentially to a company to look at um, our open source code to make sure that we're not vulnerable to any um, attacks. Yeah. Okay, that's it, yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay, so if there's any questions, I think there's a mic. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't need a mic. Uh, yeah, shout at me. Yeah. <laughs> full film, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's awkward. Um, so we're talking about open source, um, but you keep referring to it as a city's benefit, right? Mm. So you're obviously in Cape Town. Uh, how does the things that you guys do benefit anyone else? Like in terms of Joburg or something like that, because obviously you're writing things like the mini substations that re that's reusable across board, right? Mm. So I'm assuming this is politics that's mm. between that, or do you share your 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 system? Do you share it across? Yeah, so I think I mean from from where we're sitting, I, I, I think we're c we're comfortable and I mean we're open to sharing, and I think there's already some sharing happening, uh, but not just with government, with uh, industry as well. So it's open to anybody. Um, so, uh, but I think the challenge is the, I, thi I think, okay, the application is there, you can say, but then the challenge is the data and working of the data. So the other, the other challenge that we have as, a, as government is how do we make our data interoperable and the different formats and the standards that we use. So, but I think, yeah, there's no, there's no reason why, I mean, from the city side, why we don't want to share. I mean, no, we're quite open to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it's just a general feeling, like mm. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know how to be nice about it, but generally through the presentation it's depressing, mm. it's depressing, it's depressing. Mm. Then it comes to a bit of, like it's interesting seeing now that you guys are actually making use of the newer technologies in your mm. own space. But the way you mention it between the politics, between divisions, mm. it sounds very much like a corporate world. Mm. Um, but it sounds a little bit more upscaled than, mm. than what we would face in like a bank or something like that. Mm. Um, it's just I'm um, getting at are there any open source projects that are currently available for people who are working for other companies that are able to actually co contribute to them uh, and then help you? Not necessarily with, because because I'm not a I'm not I'm not good with data, but I can I can make you an application mm. that's efficient, right? Mm. So is there any way we can contribute, or is there any platforms that you are currently using that that we can like donate our code to you mm. to make this better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Gordon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks. I think that's, you know, we're very, as, as Delano mentioned, we're very open to that. So we do have an organization on GitHub, which is City of Cape Town, uh, all lowercase, all one word. Um, and the stuff that we have there right now, I'd characterize it as, um, it's mostly infrastructure related things. Um, so we have some of our Docker images, um, and then also 
um, we've, we've got some work internally around building a data portal. Um, and, you know, we really welcome people contributing and getting involved on that stuff. Um, I think, as Delano mentioned, the th when we start looking to more formal application development and building things on top of, uh, you know, that could be used internally or external to the city, um, you know, provided we work out, I think, you know, licensing, it's always this bugbear, but I think if we just slap on the MIT license and, and go, um, you know, I think there's no reason that, and that's maybe a good point for us to take away too, you know, make sure that we give a nice easy entry point for people to, to start contributing. And I mean anything, not just coding, right? Like writing issues, writing documentation, all of that stuff is valuable and appreciated, right? Yeah, and uh, and uh, I think the complexity in the city or any government is just as soon as you start wanting to pay for things. Uh, and that's, so, but if it's, I mean, if it's, if people are willing to offer their time, I mean, there's no issue. Um, and e even helping a specific line unit, I mean, like health or whatever. Um, but it, when there's, okay, as soon as there's money involved, obviously then supply chain kicks in, uh, and then there's all checks and balances and um, documents that we need to write. But I mean, once it's in place, then in, I mean, we can pay the individual or the company uh, for their services. So, um, but yeah, I mean, those are the things that we're open to. And, but uh, if there is solutions or if you've got any suggestions, uh, I mean, no. Uh, keen to listen. Uh, hmm. <laughs> 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 Who do you work for? <laughs> <laughs> no, I work for F and B. Okay. As, uh, as a Java dev. <laughs> so it's 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 just so yeah. Like I would like to contribute to what you do, and okay. I agree with what you say when it comes to in terms to uh, giving out to external vendors because yeah. I find a very big disparity between the software that's being used and the people that are trying to make use of it and then the customers that are going through those people trying to make use of it. Mm. Right? We see it a lot in African countries where they go out to Chinese markets, buy a piece of software and they start using it. They have no idea how to maintain it, mm. no idea how to use it. And then when it comes to maintenance, they're not maintaining it. Mm. So I think I, I agree with the idea of going open source. but. When you speak open source, I think you really, really should dive into it. Mm. Yes, there are security issues and, and, and not what not. Mm. But I mean, if you guys don't have the basis to have a person or people that can um, filter the code that or the, mm. or the st quality that comes in, then I mean, there's no point in open source. Then you stick with vendors, right? Yeah. It's not more of a question. It's more of just a statement and yeah. in a sense of frustration. <laughs> but I think, that, I mean, a big, a big uh, mandate of, of government is to create jobs. So I think it's, I mean, this is ideal. I mean, if you, by going this route, um, yeah, you're utilizing your, your job market um, and you're creating opportunities. So in terms of creating jobs internally in the city, I think this is, this is the way to go. Yeah. So, um, and then catering for the security and the maintenance and all these sort of things. Yeah. 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 yeah well, Dave makes the point that centralization is important, but I, I, yeah. I tend to disagree. When, you, when you're dealing with information from customers like this, it's, 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 it's difficult to keep it secure. That's why banks and everyone puts it in separate places and they never bring yeah. it together. Yeah. You, know, you have duplication. Um, mm. And that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to do streaming and have events come through live streams. So if a customer does something, we, we immediately have information on that, right? Yeah. Oh. But no, like, yo, it sounds too political though. <laughs> it really, it really does. No, it's, a, it's a strange space. I mean, I, I worked in private for a long time and then, yeah, it's different com on a different level, the complexities and the office politics. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Just out of interest, how long have you guys, like this team has been established in, in Cape Town? Uh, for a year and a half, a uh, year, year and a half, yeah. Uh, and and if, a politic if, the, if the political party is pushed out, will you guys still be situated? No, I think we have, we, we've got good support, yeah. So it's, okay. uh, but, if, uh, but like I said, we're not part of ISMT, so it's that, it's that challenge. How do we work better together? Because yeah? um, I mean, obviously we're coming with a specific skill set that's feeling threatening to them. Um, but I mean, it's not supposed to be. It's just, I mean, they must enable us, we enable them. Yeah. Thanks, that was informational. Okay. I enjoyed it. Just, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, sir. I think we can wrap up. Thanks. <laughs>